President Trump criticizes Governor Larry Hogan. This comes after he and First Lady Yumi Hogan brokered a deal to get half a million tests from South Korea. That's something Governor Hogan calls a huge step in the right direction. Comes as Maryland sees another jump in COVID-19 cases. There are now nearly 14,000 cases and 516 people have died. WJZ is live at the Pimlico testing site. Amy Quad has the president's comments and the governor's reaction. Amy. Good morning, Max. The president's criticism came at yesterday's press briefing. And meanwhile, though, with these additional tests, Maryland will soon have one of the highest capacities for testing in the country. At his Monday press briefing, President Trump lashed out at Governor Larry Hogan. Uh, some of the governors, like uh, as an example, the governor from Maryland didn't really understand the list. He didn't understand too much about what was going on. The president was talking about a list of federal testing facilities. More than a month earlier, Hogan wrote this letter asking Mr. Trump for federal help building large test sites, help that never came. Hogan defended himself during an appearance on CNN. I'm not sure what the president's referring to. I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on, and I appreciated the uh, information that was provided by his team. Uh, but he, he wasn't there for, I'm not sure what he was trying to say. Governor Larry Hogan and First Lady Yumi Hogan walked out together with a South Korean flag set up prominently for the announcement that Maryland had bought enough supplies for half a million tests from the South Korean lab genomics. They arrived over the weekend at BWI Marshall Airport. The administration made it clear over and over again that they want the states to take the lead. Uh, and we have to go out and do it ourselves, and so that's exactly what we did. The federal government also bought tests from South Korea, which has been lauded as a leader worldwide in its testing operation. But this is the first sale brokered by an individual state. The test will cost $9 million. $9 million to try to, you know, keep hundreds of thousands of people safe and protect thousands of lives and to get our economy back on track seems like a pretty worthwhile investment. And the governor says they were able to get FDA approval for those South Korean test kits. He also added that while testing is key to reopening the state, he does not want to do it in a piecemeal approach. Reporting live this morning, I'm Amy Kawada for WJZ. Amy, thank you. Not everyone is following Governor Hogan's executive order to stay home. 45 people have been charged for violating it. Officers have responded to more than 1,800 calls for potential violations. State police say they range from large gatherings to people operating businesses deemed non-essential. Okay, it's day five since the Paycheck Protection Program ran out of money. So some small businesses are struggling while they wait for the program to be replenished. WJZ is live. Mike Shu hears from local businesses who say they're getting desperate waiting for checks to get there. Mike. Good morning, Max. Some businesses we talked to say they were able to get the money, but others applied too late and are hopeful that a second round of funding will come through. Gail Furman, the co-owner of Max's Tap House in Fells Point, is one of thousands of Baltimore businesses forced to close down and furlough its employees. And how do we all make it work? not only from us from a business standpoint, but from people socially. Federal lawmakers are now working to finalize a $470 billion bill that would replenish the relief fund for small businesses like this one. The deal adds $310 billion to the Paycheck Protection Program, which ran out of money last week. Yesterday, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said Democrats were still negotiating with the Trump administration and suggested the Senate meet today to ultimately finalize a plan. Colleagues, it's past time to get this done for the country. Officials warn the upcoming gross domestic product number could be the lowest since the Great Depression, but they believe the economy will bounce back when the country reopens. Some very small businesses without ready access to an accountant or to their detailed payroll numbers say that it was very difficult to apply. Now, there is uh, the, the ability today, this afternoon, that there will be a vote in the Senate for additional funding. I'm Mike Shu reporting live at Fells Point for WJZ. President Trump announces he is temporarily suspending immigration to the U.S. He made the announcement on Twitter, writing in light of the attack from the invisible enemy, as well as the need to protect the jobs of our great American citizens, I will be signing an executive order to temporarily suspend immigration into the United States. Several states are moving ahead with plans to reopen their economies. Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee have unveiled plans to ease their state's stay-at-home restrictions. State parks in Texas have already reopened. So have the beaches in Florida. Elsewhere, there are signs of growing impatience with the lockdown orders. 
we're tired of this. We want to be able to do business, and we can do it safely on our own. We don't need we don't need these these measures to be mandatory. Instead of waiting for the perfect vaccine, which is going to take a long time to get, and it won't be perfect, just like flu vaccines are never perfect, at this point, we need to be able to get, be given the choice to, to be able to get out and start living our lives again. Experts say returning to normal life will depend on the availability of widespread testing, especially in hard hit areas. An outdoor testing site was set up in Anne Arundel County so patients could talk to health care professionals and get screened for the coronavirus. As Rachel Carden reports, this is the first time patients were able to get tested without showing any symptoms of the virus. Lorenzo Robas says her mother wants peace of mind. She just wants to protect us to make sure everything's okay. She doesn't want nothing to happen to us. The family was screened Monday along Drew Street in Annapolis, even though they were not symptomatic. Originally, only patients with cough, fever, or breathing issues could make an appointment, but the health department didn't turn anyone away. So they get a cotton swab and then just swab your, um, your mouth for... Yeah, just to see. And then they said that in three days we'll have results. By Wednesday, the family will know whether or not any of them have COVID-19. The goal is and has been to stop the spread. When we get the results back, we'll talk to them. Even if they, even if they test negative, we still talk to them about isolation. If they test positive, we'll have that conversation and we'll do contact tracing. Sporting a mask made by a local surf shop, Annapolis Mayor Gavin Buckley says marginalized communities are getting hit hardest, which is why the county wants to test as many people as possible. No one's judging you. You know, it's all in the best interest of the community and the world that we get as many people tested as possible. The testing site was outside to keep people far apart, held in an area many people can walk to so the service could be provided to those who need help. The health officer said originally they only had 20 to 25 patients that made appointments for screenings today. At the end of the day, they had ended up seeing more than double that number. They say everybody tested today will have their results by Tuesday or Wednesday. The health department will get in contact with them about next steps. In Annapolis, I'm Rachel Cardin for WJZ. Congressman Steny Hoyer will be giving this year's commencement address at the University of Maryland virtually, of course. The 1963 graduate says he's honored to speak to this year's class. UMD will recognize grads with a virtual ceremony May 22nd in care packages with a special cap and tassel. All grads are then invited to walk in the December ceremony. Baltimore City Schools are making sure students stay on track, especially the seniors. It's created an online guide to answer student questions from things like graduation status, senior projects, AP and SAT information to final grades. There's even a section on graduation ceremonies, prom and diplomas. For more on the guide, just go to quick links on our website homepage. While library buildings themselves are closed, you can still get their Wi-Fi in Baltimore County. County Executive Johnny Olszewski says that there's newly installed external Wi-Fi capacity at nine new public library locations. This helps students and others without high-speed internet have access. Plus, the Wi-Fi signal is strong enough to get it from your car outside the building or any other way you can keep your social distance. Of course, WJZ has everything you need to know about the pandemic. Go to WJZ.com and look under top stories for a list of resources. Plus, the most important links and numbers are under quick links.